Have you ever wondered how to do this locked on effect? What's going on YouTube, it's Marv here and today I'll be teaching you how to do the locked on effect with both photos and video in Premiere Pro and After Effects. If you're stuck and you wanna to skip to a specific part of this video, use the chapters on the timeline to skip right to it. If you wanna see the whole process and how I shot all of my photos, then check down in the description and also linked at the top of the video. Now, if you're watching this video before you've actually gone out and created your content, listen to these four tips. If you've already shot your content, I guess it's good food for thought for next time. Tip number one, choose your subject on set or prior to you shooting your content. Whether you wanna keep your ball a head, a waist, as your subject, try and keep that point in the middle of your frame as a general rule of thumb. Tip number two, make sure you are using a wider than normal focal length. If you're used to shooting at 85, shoot at 50. If you're used to shooting at 50, shoot at 35. And that's only if you've got the access to doing so, of course. Tip number three, remember that obstacles make the job harder. Whether going through the manual process or the autonomous one, it just makes it a lot harder. Avoid obstacles if you want an easy process. Tip number four, try and use high shutter speeds. I know some of you videographers will turn around and say, well, I want to keep my 180 shutter, or you might just be ingrained in that thought process. A faster shutter will keep each frame tack sharp, which will help later on with the tracking side of things. So let's get right into it and let's open up Premiere Pro with the photos. As some of you may know, I've had some problems with my computer. So you're seeing a timeline that has a load of uh, missing files. Ultimately, I've finished with the project and I'll just take you through the process of what I did and how I got to my results. So I hope this screen looks familiar to everyone. If it doesn't, then just go up to the top here and press editing. I think I've mildly changed mine, but everything should be in approximately the same place. I want you to click on the screen that will have your video content, jump up to view, and I want you to make sure that your show rulers is, is currently on. Next, I want you to go back to view and go to show guides. And as you can see, the last time I did this, I had my guides already set up. You can change the color of these guides if they clash with your image. And I've just taken off lock guides, but you will be turning that on after you put your guides in the right position. Here comes your creative control. You can put these guides wherever you want to. It all depends on where you want to keep your subject within the frame. I think mine is close to the middle now, so I'm gonna go back to view and I'm gonna lock the guides like I asked you to a second ago. I'm assuming you've already taken your photos now and you've edited them all in Lightroom, picked out the sequences that you like or the burst photos that you like. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you really need to go back to the POV that I shot. In my my opinion if your camera shoots at about 10 frames a second on the photography side of things then I think it's important to select all of your photos once they're in your your bin or library whatever you want to call it select all go to speed and duration and make sure they are all sitting at 0 0.5 zero to ultimately making them about two frames each now going through my first process i actually made them two and three and two and three that's just how i felt it looked better so it's completely up to you on how you want to customize that what i'm then going to do is drag that onto the timeline notice i put that on the second line above because we're actually going to put something underneath it just here we're going to create a new item and we're going to go to color mat we're going to press ok because it's more than likely going to fit our entire screen and we're going to choose a color that is going to be different to our our picture, our image. I think I chose red before, but I'm going to go somewhere in between. I'm going to give it like a, a pinkish color. Press OK, name it, and maybe call it pink, whatever, whatever color it may be. And we're going to put that on the first layer. And I'm just going to extend that out. So what that's going to do is that's going to give us a noticeable background because when you leave it without it on it's just black and sometimes you miss bits when you have a black background notice all of my photos are really small within the frame too that's down to photo proxying this will help your laptop or your machine speed up the work process and not lag as much once again i'll link that video above and down in the description and get on with highlighting all the photos right clicking going down to set to frame size and then we've got a full resolution looking image on the timeline. Now that we're here, here comes the manual labor. This part to the trick is grueling, I'm not gonna lie. What you wanna do for each image, you'll notice that this first image is pretty much spot on, but you wanna start off with a zoom and you wanna get that, that player's positioning correct. So I'm lucky I've got 
a loop deck here. This, this really helps with just arranging things and doing it really quickly. So I'll quickly move this over to where I want it. You can use the mouse, which is actually really good for this type of thing. So you can double click on the screen and then that will allow you to then move your subject. Moving your subject to where you need it isn't the only important part of doing this. Because if you look here, when I go back out to fit, you'll see that that photo has now come out of the full frame. And that's a problem. Well, there are two ways to go about this, but the way that I know of, instead of exporting and then cropping in more and losing more resolution is setting the anchor point. So I'm gonna zoom in again, just a little bit more. And you can see this little thing here. We're gonna drag that and we're gonna put that right where we wanted to have those crosshairs of the guides. And that's another reason why it was important to lock the guides too, because you, you'll end up pulling them out of place and then that will just completely mess up your workflow. So ultimately what you're doing is you're positioning it where you want to go. If I wanted to track the ball, for example, I might have put my guides in the middle of the frame or just somewhere else. But seeing as I wanted the head, that is perfect positioning for me, probably about 65% of where the screen is, that was that was right for me. So as I mentioned, grueling process of putting all of these in these things in place, having a loop deck helps because I don't have to come out of each individual file. I can just move on to the next clip seamlessly. I can double click, I can move that back over to the same spot and I can find my anchor point. Once you have done, in my situation 690 images it's, it's a hell of a lot what you then want to do to fill out the frame is just up your scale so scale is up here once again i've got a loop deck so i'm not going to bother with that but you just want to scale it up you want to keep going until the whole frame is full right and the beauty of moving your anchor point is that it zooms in from where you dropped it. If you left it in the middle, then imagine trying to zoom into someone's face, but you're zooming in from here. It's gonna to go to their chest rather than the area that you put in the crosshair. So that helps the whole process. Personally, I went through reframing and then I went through them again and then moved all the anchors completely down to you on which order you wanna do it and how you wanna do it, but that will, sort you out within the process and essentially that is it it's not very hard it just yeah takes a bit of attention just remember the closer the subject to the side or corners of the frame the more you will have to crop in to fill that frame i'll use this photo as an example if i've got the ball here and i want the ball to be my subject i'm gonna have to up that scale a lot more just to get it in frame and as you can see i've not had my uh anchor point in the right position so it's zoomed in at that point which is not what i wanted once you're finished add in your sound design and you know off with it now moving on to after effects and video i'm actually going to skip the section where i thought i'd put in after effects and photos naturally when i went through this process i thought that i could definitely use after effects tracking but i didn't anticipate how hard it would be to use with photos i'm just going to let you know now don't even bother with it even if you're putting all your photos into premiere and just having them at a full frame and then going into after effects it's just it's, it's difficult, put it that way. It doesn't, it doesn't work that well. And that's the same with S and Q modes too. I thought I could be quite smart after doing this a few times and recording S and Q so that you're getting that photo-like feel when it comes to your results. But it's just, it just, it's not the same and it messes up Adobe, Premiere, uh, Adobe After Effects. So full disclosure, I am terrible with After Effects. So if I'm missing anything, please comment below. Please educate me. But for what I'm doing now, I feel like it's, it's pretty straightforward. So I've just made a new Premiere Pro project file. And the reason for doing this is personally, I prefer the, the dynamic link route rather than the import route. And let me know if this is dynamic link because I'm not even sure if it is. Terrible effort for myself, but we've got the clip on the timeline. I'm just gonna chop it up to make sure that we've just got the bits that we need. So then all I'm doing is I'm right clicking on the clip and I'm gonna go to replace with After Effects composition. At that point, it's going to open up After Effects and I'm gonna type in locked on football. Now, if you dropped your clip straight into After Effects, of course, it would sit here, you drag it onto the timeline here, and then after you were done with the tracker, you would have to then go into, I believe it's down here, and then transform it, and then export it, but then you have to export it with media encoder. I'm used to Premiere, so I prefer 
for once I'm done with it, it just comes straight back into Premiere Pro and then I can deal with all that stuff after. That's why I prefer the dynamic link side of things. Once again, if this isn't dynamic link, then let me know what the difference is because I'm well confused. Anyway, really simple. Once you select a click on the timeline, what I don't understand is why I can't go past 12 seconds. I never really understood that, but I'm sure you'll get the point and you'll figure out, <laughs> well, I'll figure out why you, you can't go past 12 seconds, but just someone let me know. Someone let me know. Stabilize motion. And for this, we're gonna look to track the ball. Go to options, go to stop tracking if confidence is below 80%. So basically, if it feels like it can't keep up or it's getting the wrong subject, then it will pause so that you can readjust and put things back into the right positioning. I'm simply expanding my box. And I'm gonna to aim to put this around the football. Now, please bear this in mind. The bigger your box, the slower the process. The bigger your box, the better it tracks. I think that goes hand in hand. But with that being said, I'm actually gonna, just for the sake of it, make my box relatively big. Let's see if we can make it a bit smaller. And then you've got these options here. So you've got analyze forward, which should start from the start of your clip. Then you've got analyze forward one frame. Don't really understand the analyze backwards. It always messes up for me. What I do know is that if there is ever a mistake, then I'll be using analyze frame one frame backwards so get your gaming fingers out get ready to analyze forward just have a finger on that button just in case it goes too far and you have to start backing up i'm going to turn my screen brightness up so that i can see and pay attention i'm going to start off pressing play and that is going a lot slower than what it was earlier so as you can see it's already i've had to press it again it's already kind of done one frame and then it's paused again because it felt like maybe I can't keep up. This is why higher frame rates are important. If you had a 180 shutter, which is the correct way, in some ways of saying the correct way of doing your videography work, you're gonna, you're gonna introduce motion and blur. So you're gonna have to give that up in some cases to get more consistency. Unless you wanna do it the manual way, if you do it the manual way, then you've got no problems. So this process is really simple now. It's autonomous, as I mentioned earlier. It's just a case of if your box is bigger, it's gonna take some time. If it's smaller, um, then it might jump around a lot more and you've got more work to do. I'm gonna plow through this and just speed up the screen for you guys so you don't have to endure the, the pain of waiting. This is taking way too long. I'm gonna try and make the box a lot smaller now. And let's see if we can even move it. Let's see what we got. Let's see if that helped. No, not really, to be fair. Let's make the surrounding box a bit smaller. And this is 4K, guys. If you were, <laughs> if you were shooting with photos like what I tried to do earlier, yeah, rest in peace your time. Oh, so we've had our first hiccup where it's missed it. So we'll just readjust. Hiccuped again, once again, not far off. I don't know why it hasn't just held on there. If you feel like me right now, where it's kind of picking up the subject, where it's just not sure, you might want to drop your confidence level a little bit lower and it just might kind of continue and stay on approximate track. Let's give it a try. Definitely working a lot better. That was a point where it kind of went off track a little bit. So I'm gonna go back one, go back two, and I'm just gonna recenter that. I'm gonna go back to play and hopefully it sticks. Remember what I said about obstacles? I'm actually puzzled that it was able to find it for that kind of period of time whilst it was behind my leg. Impressed. I 
and we're finally done. I must say that did take a little while, but as you can see, it wasn't completely autonomous. There were some minor changes that you can make that are kind of like the photo way. Anyway, you click apply, you press okay, and I think it's done what it needs to do. So I'm actually gonna save it, control or command S, control S if you're using Windows, and I'm not gonna close it, but I'm gonna head back into my Premiere timeline and I'm going to go with the outpoint. Seeing as this took so long, I probably won't go through the S and Q mode. Feel free to try it if you want to, but for me, it just didn't seem to work as smoothly as this did. Maybe it's because it's the breakdown in frame. I, I don't know, I don't know. So I'm just gonna press enter to render my files. Once I'm all rendered, you can see exactly what my screen is looking like. So that ball is being followed. That motion is spectacular. There are a couple of hiccups that I made in this video that I asked you to be careful about in, in the tips. One of them being keeping the subject in the middle of the frame. Now I used a tripod for this shot, so there's not much that I could have done when it comes to following my subject, unless you've got the RS2 gimbal that <laughs> attracts certain things with the Raven eye and stuff like that. I don't even know if that would work that well. I'm assuming that you're gonna be behind the camera. So the idea is if you've got a ball to follow, make sure you're following your, your subject, whether that is, whether that's the head, trying to keep it in the center of the frame or at a certain point of the frame, Whatever that may be, try and do that because that's gonna save you editing space. So let's go into the scale side of things where I'm gonna now use my loop deck. And what I might do is just create some keyframes. I'm gonna start off right at the start here. I'm gonna then press forwards. And then from here, I've already seen some black spots already. So in a little bit more, go a little bit tighter. And then we're gonna move frames can already see at this point you're starting to see black spots again now I could in theory bring that frame down but I, I don't want to I just want to use my scale ah, and here's the bit where I'm gonna to have to start being careful because we're getting near that edge that might mess up the whole frame because I've only just made a keyframe on this side but we'll see when we get to the end of our results Let's go down again, just keep trying to use that. But what happens now is you'll notice that even though it's got the locked on effect, it's now gonna completely change. You know what, I've just realized I've made a mistake. Delete all of that. I'm gonna put everything back to where it was. I'm gonna take my advice from the first clip. Okay guys, so don't know how, but it's managed to completely unravel everything. <laughs> I don't know how I've managed to do this. After Effects Pros are probably just laughing at me now, but I'll try and fix it in, in After Effects and hope it fixes itself in Premiere Pro. I'm sorry guys, I'm, I'm just not good at this. You can clearly tell that I did mine on Premiere, thought I knew what I was doing on After Effects and Clearly it's, clearly it's just a dynamic link situation that's messing things up. Okay, so I seem to have fixed it somehow. Someone still tell me what I did wrong, please. So something that I made a mistake with at first was not changing the anchor point. I've now done that as you can see, and let's see if we can fix the issue. So in theory, that anchor point should not leave the ball because we've locked on. Now we're gonna go back to the start and we're only gonna, we're gonna do exactly what I did just a few seconds ago. Except this time we're not gonna change any of the positioning. We're only gonna work with the scale. Anytime we see a black box, we're just gonna draw in. As I mentioned earlier, we're not gonna focus so much on drawing out until maybe coming past this scene. That's why it's important to keep your subjects in the middle. And that's it, we're all done. I'm gonna try and export this now and you'll see my results. It looks great in my opinion. Yeah, there are little bits that I could have done a little bit better, but ultimately I'm happy with the results. I'm happy with how this turned out. And I hope you are too. The pros and cons with Premiere and going through that process the whole way through, of course you have a lot more control, but it takes you hours. On the flip side, once you get a little bit better than I am with After Effects, then it seems like everything else is smooth sailing. With photos, you get more resolution. With video, you just don't. It all depends on what kind of project you're doing and what you need to work towards. If you have any questions or if I've missed anything, please let me know in the comments. If you've tried this and you're really good at it, just tag me up on Instagram, show me your work. I, I could do with some learning too. Ultimately, I'd love to see what you've created and I'd love to learn some new techniques. So as always, if you've liked this video, please pop me over a like. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and I'll speak to you on the next one. Peace.